In this section, we'll look at customizing the Microsoft Word options. Now, to do this, go and click on File, then click on Options, and you'll find you've got this page here. Notice there's lots of different tabs here, so you can move up and down. So, if you look at the General tab first, what you should do is read through these and see if there's uh, any options that are particularly interesting for you. So, for instance, a common one that's changed is the name here. At the moment, it says uh, David Murray, which is my name. I could change that to the company name. And uh, you can either keep or get rid of the initials. So, a little typo there. So there you are, I've added the company name and if I click on OK, that would save that and that information would be embedded within any new documents that I create. If you scroll down here, you can see there's various other features here. So for instance, do you want the start screen displayed when the window starts? By default it's yes, if you don't want it, you can take it off like so. If you look at the display option here, Again, there's lots and lots of different options. So let's say for some reason you wanted uh, tab characters to be displayed automatically within your document. You could put that on by clicking here. Um, let's say you wanted hidden text to be displayed. Um, let's say you wanted all formatting marks to be displayed. You could click on this. This one here is quite useful. If you use fields within a document, so for instance, let's say you've created uh, something like a table of contents, which works as a field, you could click on this and that would automatically force the update of all fields within a document prior to printing. So you can enable it or not. If you've got linked data within your documents, again you can force an update prior to printing by clicking on this option. If you click on where it says proofing, there's all sorts of things here. So for instance you can set up what are called autocorrect options. Um, when it's um, running the spell check, you can, by default, you can tell it to ignore words in uppercase. Personally, I find that a little bit dangerous because I could have something in uppercase and it could be misspelled, so I don't like that one. So I generally take that one off. You can ignore words that contain numbers. Again, it's up to you. You can take it off or leave it on. It's up to you. Uh, this one's a good one. You, know, you can fl uh, flag repeated words which is a common typo, especially one that I make a lot. If you come down a bit, other things you can do is you can do spell checking as, you're ty as you type, and by default that's enabled. If you don't want it for some reason, take it off. Personally, I'd leave it on. In the same way, you can do grammar checking as you type. If we click on the Save tab over here, again, lots and lots of different options. So, for instance, you can set the auto recover to um, save your page every um, 10 minutes. If you wanted to increase that to 15 minutes, you just type in 15 there. This one's quite useful. I tend to mostly use the computer and save things to the hard disk, so I generally enable this one so it saves to the computer by default. And if it's going to save to the computer, you can set the default location. So this particular course is a Word 365 intermediate course. So I've actually created a subdirectory or a folder, if you like, called um, Word 386 intermediate under my documents uh, folder. And basically this means that whenever I um, create a document and save a document, by default, it'll go into this uh, folder here, which in turn is under the documents um, folder, which is on my C drive. The Languages tab just allows you to have multiple languages installed. So um, I've basically got Australian and United Kingdom languages here. Ease of Access has numerous options again. So for instance, one is you can show um, shortcut keys in the screen tips. That's generally on by default. If you click on the Advanced tab here, as you can see, there's loads and loads and loads and loads of different options. So for instance, this one here, um, typing replaces selected text. That means if you double click on word on a word or select um, multiple words, maybe in a paragraph, then when you start typing, it'll uh, basically overtype what you've selected. This one here is a good one, which again is on by default. When selecting, automatically select the entire word, not just part of it. Again, there's loads of other things. I mean, here's an example. 
you can use um, the control key to follow through on hyperlinks, which means if you press the control key down, click on a, click on a hyperlink, that will take you to where the hyperlink points to, maybe a website page or something like that. If you do a lot of cutting and pasting or copy and pasting, you can control how the formatting um, is applied from the source to the original. So for instance, if you're pasting um, in the same document, you can have settings here. If you're pasting between documents, as you can see, you can do various things like you can you know, keep the source formatting, which is the default. You can merge the formatting, um, basically change the options as you like. If we scroll down a bit in the display section here, you can control how many um, documents are displayed within the recent document list. So if 50 is too much, you can bring that down to, say, 20. So printing options you've got are things like allow printing in the background, which is normally what you'd want to do. But if for some reason printing was um, you know, of primary importance to you and you wanted it to print faster, maybe you might want to take that one off, in which case the, um, you know, the lion's share of the CPU's attention would be diverted to printing rather than anything else that's going on in Word. And if you look carefully, there's all sorts of other things, like for instance, if you use uh, field codes a lot, you can click this on so you'll see the, the field code uh, being printed, you know, the actual code as opposed to the effect of the code. If you click on where it says Customize Ribbon, you can if you want customize the entire ribbon up here. Um, I used to do this, but these days I, I don't bother because the ribbon's pretty well set up for what I need. But if you do want to add bits and pieces or remove bits and pieces from the ribbon, you can do that. In the same way, you can customize the quick access toolbar. You can add bits and pieces and um, remove bits and pieces if you want to. So as you can see, there's an awful lot of customization options available to you. Uh, really what you need to do is to open this up, and I'll just do that again. It was um, File, Options, and then really just go through all the different options here and um, you know, see if there's some options that make your use of WordPress easier.